Hello everyone, I'm Francesco Paladino, a PhD student at the Scuola Superiore Sant'Anna. In this video, I will show you how to run the multi-criteria optimizer we developed for the Ampere project. The optimizer is made of an executable called DAG, having a command line interface, so it requires some uh, options uh, to be, in order to be run. These options are listed using the minus minus help command. When you press enter, you get all of them with a uh, sh very short description. Uh, I will pick a very simple example uh, to tell what of these uh, options are actually needed to uh, load an application and uh, optimize it. Suppose you have this application here with a single DAG and several nodes. Uh, we prepare the script to load this application. Uh, we use the minus "-s", option to specify the hardware platform on which the application is expected to be run. In this case, it's the Xilinx board. And then we have several options for the output of the optimizer, labeled as minus "-a". Some are for debugging purposes, while some are uh, actually important to, uh, to, have to obtain the, uh, the, the optimal configuration. The minus O dot uh, is needed for the graphical representation of the placement converted at the end of the optimizer as a PDF file. And then the minus O Y A M L, a textual representation of the placement obtained by the optimizer. Uh, this is how instead you run the, uh, the you import the application onto the optimizer. You declare a new DAG with the minus D option with period and deadlines. Uh, and then when you want to add uh, tasks to the DAG, you use the minus T option, followed by the uh, execution time of that task. In case the task has an alternative implementation for the hardware accelerators, in this case, in the case of the Xilinx board, uh, the uh, FPGA, uh, you use the minus A option, specifying the ID of the accelerator of the platform, and the execution time on that uh, accelerator. Finally, you specify the uh, precedence relationships between the nodes of the tags uh, using the minus p option. Using these, para these options here, um, the optimizer will by default find the optimal configuration showing the minimum power, average, uh, power consumption on average on the hardware platform. Uh, this mode of importing applications is, um, is not feasible for very large use cases like in those in the Ampere project, for which we have instead a representation using JSON files that are actually the TDGs enriched with the timing information. Did you see the matrix uh, properties for each task? For each task? Uh, we have a different JSON file for each processing unit type and frequency. In our case, we only got a CPU, uh, the measurements on the CPU and the measurements on the FPGA slot. Um, we prepared another script here to load these uh, JSON files onto the um, optimizer. And, and it's showed here in this window. So again, we're using uh, the Xilinx board with the minus s option, but instead of defining the tag as we did before with the minus d option, we use the minus json option to directly load the json files representing the TDGs. Okay, so once again I can run this script here and I will show you that the optimizer will find the um, optimal configuration with the uh, exhibiting the minimum power consumption on average. So this is the output of our program. So besides a phase in which the, uh, the optimizer loads the application, there's the relay to the Grobi commercial optimizer for solving the problem, which you see here it runs, this is its log, uh, and finds the optimal solution here. Indeed, our application at the end of it states that a valid solution was found. Uh, this optimization run produced a, a PDF file that I will show you here um, with a graphical representation of the placement 
uh, with the minimum power. The graphical representation is made of nodes, you see, represented by these ovals. Ovals are placed onto squares representing processing units, so this actually says on which processing unit each task is mapped. Processing units belong to bigger squares uh, representing the um, processing unit type. In this case, uh, this processing unit here belongs to the uh, CPU island 0. At the, at the bottom of the figure, you've got the estimated power consumption value uh, given by this configuration. If you take a look at the whole application here, you see there's only one rectangle for the processing unit types, meaning that the optimizer did not use the FPGA slot, but only the CPU one. And the reason is simple, because we, de we decided to run the optimizer to obtain the, the configuration with the minimum power consumption. Uh, the FPGA slots consumes, consume more uh, power than the CPU uh, of the platform, even though the tasks uh, that, ha that have both implementations uh, exhibit a shorter um, execution time on the FPGA. However, since tasks on the FPGA require less time, uh, the day mapping on the FPGAs may lead to configurations uh, having more robustness against unpredictable events. Uh, so in order to obtain a mapping with the FPGA, I will run the optimizer in the uh, maximum robustness mode um, under a given power budget constraint. As constraint, we, we, we're taking the power value obtained by the minimum power configuration, you see it's displayed in the PDF, but I'll increment it of only 5% to let the um, to give the optimizer freedom to choose the FPGA implementation. So I go back to the script here and I will add a new command line option called minus pb specifying the power budget constraint for the maximum robustness mode. I will give you three I will give you three watts, that is that is more or less five percent increase with respect to the optimal value, and I will run again the script. I obtain again a valid solution as it states, as the program states, and this is the configuration in, in, the, in the PDF format. And indeed, as you can see here, we've got a, another square representing the FPGA, telling that now there's a task that is mapped to the FPGA. Uh, so we, we obtained a new system configuration with a, a little bit increased power consumption, but that tolerates more, uh, with respect to the previous one, uh, unpredictable events for the, the robustness of the application. In addition to this graphical representation, the optimizer produces, produces as I said before, the YAML file that is a textual representation of the placement it obtained. Uh, and this will be used by our RTDAG application uh, to, to run an experiment on the real board and see whether the, uh, the placement actually found a schedulable configuration.